Hey guys, welcome to my channel Pretzel Cosplay. Do you remember that we showed you how you can make the base for fish bones? Well, today I'm going to show you how you can actually cover it with Warbla and give it all the details. So if you want to see that, keep watching. If you want to know more about crafting with Warbla, then be sure to check out my book and also my digital books and pattern. If this is the first video you're watching, be sure to also watch the former one, which is about how I made the foam base for fish bones. I will link it in the description below, so you can easily find this video. But if you already saw it, then keep watching this video, because now we're going to cover it with Warbla. For this project, I chose Warbla's pearly art. It's the white colored Warbla. And in comparison to the brown Warbla, Warbla's finest art, it's really smooth. It also sticks to itself when it's heated up, just like the other Warbla types. So to cover the foam base, I cut different shapes of stripes, strips of Warbla, and then I just heat it up, put it on the foam, and press it firmly on there. For every piece of the base, I cut another piece of warbla and I did the same. <laughs> so I basically just covered it. And I cut off the excess and pressed down the seam. When the warbla cooled down a bit, I heated it up again using my heat gun. And I heat it up to approximately 70 degrees Celsius, because at that temperature the warbla is soft and it gets sticky and you can really work with it. So then I just use my wooden tools to really press the shape in it and also to connect the pieces of warbla together so the foam is fully covered. I keep repeating this process until I cover the full base of the bazooka. After I covered the base, I take some new warbla pieces to cover the armor plates for the bazooka. In the last video I showed how I made these plates, and now I'm going to add the warbla. So I heat up the warbla until it's soft, and then I put the foam in between. I use my fingers to press the warbla down and to close it at the edges. As you can see, the warbla sticks to itself. That's the really nice thing about this material. When it's warm, it gets sticky and it sticks to itself. So you don't need glue to work with this material. Then I heat up the bottom again, because it's cooled down. So I can cut it out around the edge. I use a sturdy pair of scissors for this. Because even though the warbler is soft, it's still rather thick. Then. I heat up the warbla again to make it soft again, because it always cools down when you work with it. And then I move the edge over the surface, the working surface, to make the seam smooth. Because I don't want a visible seam in the end, where I cut off the warbla. To make it extra smooth, I go over it with a wooden tool. You can also use a butter knife for this because it's also really smooth. To make the details stand out, like the, the edge and the holes inside the armor plate, 
I heat it up again so it gets soft, <laughs> like you know by now. And I just press it in better. I use the tool to really make the edges visible and stand out. This makes it less rounded and just more crisp, more clean. I do the same for the holes. I don't actually push the holes through, so I leave them like this, because otherwise you could see through them and I don't want that for the end result. Now the plate is straight, but it needs to be curved to fit around the round base for the bazooka. Now it's still warm, I can uh, get it in the right shape and then it needs to cool down and when it's cooled down it will stay in this shape and it will be hard again like it was in the beginning. So now I just leave it like that and then after it's cooled down I will add it to the bazooka right on the spot where I want it. Then I repeat this whole process for the other plates, armor plates. So sandwich the foam between warbla, heat it up, make the edges stand out, press it closed at the edges around the foam, making sure that it's closed all around. And then just refining the edge a little bit so I will uh, see it better where I have to cut it. Because sometimes it's a little bit hard to see where you need to cut it. Then cut it out with my scissors right beside the edge. Don't cut off too much because the warbler will get loose again. And don't cut off not enough because then you will have some ugly lines on the sides. You want it to be barely noticeable where you cut. Take some practice, but once you get it, then it will be easy. Then heat it up again because, of course, the warbler cools down. And refine the edges again. The raised edges. Looks so nice. Then I needed this piece to be a little bit more um, raised, so away from the base. So I made some, how do you call these? Distance holders? I'm not sure. But I made these so the plate will actually be hoovering a little bit from the base. Then I check if the placement is right. And if it's good, I heat up both the distance holders and the plate and then attach it together. And the warbler will stick to itself. No need for glue. And then on the top, I do the same for the big plate. I also made some distance holders. I know it's not the name, but I don't know how to call them. And then I attached the bigger plate. Fishbones also has a belt around it with a buckle. To make this buckle I use some warbler scraps. So I just put them together, heat them up and then start sculpting them. I made a little drawing of the shape and the size of the buckle so I could put it underneath my working surface which is a silicone mat to protect my table against the heat. And then I can use that as a guide to sculpt my buckle. You can do everything with Warbler, it's amazing. Ta-da! Remember we made the handle out of foam? Now we're going to cover it with Warbler as well. So we get two pieces of Warbler, put the foam in between and press it closed around the edges. I cut it out so the shape of the handle will appear again. Then I refine the uh, seams and I will heat up the attachments. 
with some heat. And then I will just push it on there. And there you go, the handle is also done. I wasn't sure if the handle was strong enough because it had to carry the whole weight of the prop. So just to be sure, I added some borders around the beginning of the handles. So this would actually glue it really to the prop. So this was just to make it extra strong. And of course, we needed to get more warbler on some foam stuff. This is the trigger for the bazooka. And we did the same. Again, heat up both the prop and the detail and then press it on there firmly so the glue and the warbler will fix it together. And keep repeating the process for all the details. Ooh, did you know that you can also follow me on Instagram? Because on Instagram I post daily content about the cosplays that I create. Also little videos and little tutorials about uh, how to make cosplay stuff. So you're welcome to follow me there and um, yeah, <laughs> comment and like and check out my posts and it's cool. <laughs> just, just be there. So the fin for fish bones is done. And the little fins, they're so cute. Just attach them to the base. And finally the big fin gets attached to the base. And now let's do the face. The face is a little bit different than the rest because it's hollow. So what I did is first fill the foam shape with some paper so it would keep its shape. Then I would check how big of a warbler piece I needed to cover the face. And then I cut it out. I heated up the warbler and shaped it over Fishbone's face. I connected it at the edges and pushed it down. I also wrapped it around the edges because for this I would only use one layer of Warbler. I was not going to sandwich this. Then I cut it out around the edge and fixed it again because as you can see I cut off too much. So this is what happens when you cut off too much of the warbler. It can be fixed by heating it up again and then just pressing it closed again. But if you really cut off too much then there will keep being holes. So just try to prevent this, that's easier. To 
to bring out the shape and the eyes, I just press in the holes that I created in the foam. As you can see, it really brings out the shape that I want. And also the little nostrils. Just sculpting a little bit with the clay modeling tools. Because, yeah, Warbler is like clay. And that way I gave him a face and a little bit of expression. To get the eyeball, I hold my hand, my finger under the warbler and pushed it out and then sculpted it around the edge so it would really look like an eyeball. But actually it's just hollow, but it needed to be hollow because I wanted to add some lights behind it and the lights will shine through one layer of white warbler. I really like this part. I think it looks really cute. Then I attached the upper jaw of fish bones to the base. Remember I made this base with the deodorant bottle <laughs> cap? And also the lower jaw. And this base is hollow so I can put a light and a battery inside. That's the idea. Now let's make his teeth. Fishbones has some cute teeth. Or are they vicious and dangerous, not cute? Mm, what do you think? Are they cute or are they dangerous? So I uh, cut the teeth out of um, craft foam and now I sandwich them with Warbler. Then I check where I want the teeth to go. I heat up both the jaw and the teeth and then I press them on there so they will be attached. Of course, we need to repeat this process for the other jaw as well. To attach a total of 12 teeth in total. Why so cute? Now we're making the tail. The foam pieces that I made earlier had to be connected now. So this is the base of the tail. That will be the base of the scales. It's made of foam and all the scales were also made of foam. I'm now shaping them a bit so they will be the perfect shape. To do this I use a little bit of heat because when you use heat on foam you can shape it and when it cools down it will stay in this shape. So I just use my heat gun like I also do with the warbler, then shape it and I need to hold it until it's cooled so it will stay curved. Look, so nice! Now I can layer the pieces on top of it, like this, and this, and this is how one part of the tail will look like. Now let's cover all the individual pieces of the tail with warbler first. So for each piece I cut two pieces of warbler that were slightly bigger than the foam piece, and sandwich the foam, and close the pieces at the edges, like we did with all the pieces, <laughs> then cut it out carefully around the edge. And use the scraps for later, because the scraps you can always use for sculpting and making details for other costumes, or to make jewelry, or accessories, accessories, accessories is a difficult word. Bear with me, I'm not English. <laughs> so yeah, you can always use warbler scraps, it's super, super nice. Then I add the base to the scale. This is actually the lower tail fin for fish bones. The upper tail fin has uh, more scales. The lower fin all only has one. So this is it. 
And for the upper tail fin, he also has some little uh, belts on the fin. So I make them with some strips of Warbla. It's a double layer of Warbla that I just cut into a strip and paste on it. Then I can attach the scales, small scale, the medium scale. Just press it on when it's both heated up so the Warbla will stick to itself. And then the larger scale. And this is how the top fin for the tail looks. I think it turned out really clean. I just add some little extra details by carving some lines to make it look more like a belt, a little bit more three-dimensional. And then by heating up both the base of the gun, of the bazooka, and the tail, I just stick on the tail. And also the bottom of the tail. Fishbones has some rivets on it. And to make these very easily all in the same shape and size, I use some googly eyes that I got at the action. You can get these at so many places. They're actually quite cute like they are now. <laughs> and then to add some battle damage, I used my soldering iron and I just scratched some scratches in it to make it really look like the prop has been used in battle. And then the crafting of the prop was done. Yay! I think it turned out super cool. And the hat is uh, detachable, so I could add a battery and some lights in it. The battle damage looks really cool too. Then, for the painting, I first prepared the surface for paint by using some primer. I'm using PVA primer and it's a little bit like wood glue. So you could use wood glue too, but PVA primer is uh, really, really nice stuff. So I really like it for Warbla. So I just apply layers of this primer using a brush. I'm using a makeup brush because it has really soft uh, hairs, so it doesn't leave so many brush strokes. And I apply a few layers of this primer until I think that the surface is smooth enough for what I want. So it really depends on your project how many layers you need. Then I'm going to sew the straps for the, the belt that has to go around fish bones. I just used some fake leather. This is craft skin from Mink. It's really nice fake leather quality. And I'm just folding over the edges and stitching over it to create a belt. Then I added the belt over the fish bones, as you can see, and I also sprayed the whole thing with black acrylic paint as a base for the silver later. I left the eye unpainted because I wanted the light to shine through. Then to paint it silver, I used gilding wax. The brand I use is Pebeo, but there are a lot of different brands as well. I use an old sock and put some paint on it and then I just rub it on the prop. At first, this can be a little bit daunting and scary to do it like this, but it really gives a nice uh, look, a really antique look, and um, it will look like the prop is already used. And that's what I was going for with this one. Uh, the paint is waxy, so it's not like acrylic paint, but it looks super nice and super shiny. And I really, really like this, uh, this material. Just keep rubbing it until I cover the whole prop in silver. So shiny! The parts that need to be a little bit extra shiny, I just give them a little bit more of the paint. So that way you can add some um, dimension to the prop. Just leave the places that should have shadow a little bit darker and put some more paint on the pieces that need to stand out.
and some more paint. <laughs> it's a rather big prop, so I need it quite a bit. But after this was done, the prop was fully finished. And the result was really cool. So now you know how you can turn all those foam bits that you made before into an actual prop. <laughs> so I really hope that you liked this video. And are you going to make fish bones for yourself as well? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you can always see my next videos. Thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next video. Bye bye!